Hello friends, you're watching in today tech and in this video we'll unbox the LG V30 Plus. LG has brought the phone in India almost a year after it launched the V30 in the global market. The only difference between the V30 Plus and the V30 is that the Plus variant comes with a 128GB storage instead of 64GB on the normal one. The Plus variant is also obviously more expensive, the box price being Rs 60,000. But LG has launched it at 45,000 rupees, which is an amazing price point. Anyways, the USP of the LG V30 or the V30 Plus is that it has a camera with f1.6 aperture, which is widest for a smartphone yet. And of course, a thin bezel OLED display. We'll take a look at the detailed specs, but first, let's quickly pull out the phone, which is comfortably sleeping inside the box. Okay, so here is the gorgeous LG V30. Slightly rounded on the sides but not curved like the Galaxy S8 and also slightly wider than many phones that have 18 to 9 display. There is Corning Gorilla Glass 5 at the front and at the back as well, unlike the V20 that uses a removable metal cover. But then it also has wireless charging now and IP68 water and dust resistance. The power button is same, placed at the back clickable and housing a fingerprint scanner, but slightly depressed this time. The dual cameras are also not protruding out much and all the sensors reside behind the glass. The phone has an aluminum frame, but it's polished enough to feel smooth like glass, something that we saw on the iPhone 10. but the V30 does look much thinner and still it manages to pack a headphone jack. At the left it has split volume rocker and at the bottom it has primary mic Type-C port and single speaker grille. Also, love it or hate it, there is no notch at the top. It is a simple and straight bezel with earpiece and front camera placed comfortably apart. And yes, there are no dual speakers. The earpiece is well just earpiece. The LG V30 manages to have a micro SD card slot alongside the SIM slot, very similar to what the Galaxy S8 does. Okay, now let's turn on the phone and take a look at the other box contents. First up, it has a user guide, then a warranty card which talks about one year of warranty. There is a travel adapter, but it's quite big so maybe I should not call it that. And then a Type-C cable. Lastly, there are a pair of earphones in the box, but they're not from Bang & Lufsen like they were on the V20. They are from LG and are in-ear type with angled buds. The wire is braided, the jack is angled and there are call controls on them but we are not sure if they sound as good as the BNO earphones. Okay, so the V30 is all set and here is how it looks. Pretty slim, almost bezel-less and quite light. It looks one of the prettiest LG devices in recent times. If you take a look at the specs, the phone seems even more enticing on paper. The V30 comes with a 6 inches display which has a 1440p or Quad HD resolution. It also supports HDR10 and is Dolby Vision compliant which is set to produce sharper colors. The phone also has an always on display feature. Under the hood, the phone packs a Snapdragon 835 chip with 4 GB of RAM and 128 GB of storage. There's also a 32 bit Hi-Fi Quad DAC for audio and Bluetooth 5.1 with Aptex HD support. At the rear, the phone has a 16 megapixel main sensor with an f1.6 aperture. It also has optical image stabilization, but the second sensor, which has a wide angle lens, does not have OIS. It's a 13 megapixel sensor with f1.9 aperture and a wide 120 degree field of view. The phone can record 4K videos at 30 FPS. At front, the phone has a 5 megapixel sensor with f2.2 aperture and a 90 degree wide angle lens. As for the battery, the phone packs a 3300 mAh pack which is not removable and on the software front the phone runs the Android 7.1.2 with LG UX 6.0 on top. Coming back to the phone, let's take a look at its display quality first. It's quite a vibrant panel and has good color production. The brightness levels also don't disappoint, whereas the Quad HD resolution plays a good part. The Pixel 2 XL which was made by LG itself had its color gamut logged to sRGB. While that is not the case with 
V30 Plus, so there is in fact a difference in the color production. Watching movies on its thin bezel screen is quite a delightful experience. Outdoors, the display has good visibility, but one thing that really irks me out is the color shift that happens as you tilt the phone. The tinge on the display changes from blue to yellow, making you feel as if the display is normal one moment, our blue light filter is turned on in the other. Phones like Galaxy S8 or the HTC U11 don't suffer from this problem. Talking about the software and user experience, the V30 is a mixed bag. Though a lot would hinge on performance that we will let you know only after using it for a longer period. But for the moment, the LG UI does seem to have its pain points, especially with the settings menu. The lock screen settings for example is placed on a different page and not where the fingerprint and security settings are. In fact the settings menu as a whole looks like a labyrinth where things are impossible to find. Otherwise the UI on V30 is quite responsive and quite swift. Apps open and close without a hitch and multitasking is smooth. It is nearly a stock experience when it comes to usage. But then again, it would be too early to say anything concrete on that. We also tested the phone's cameras in limited time and boy, it's loaded with features. The cameras are also fast. Switching between wide and zoom camera is quick and the shutter is fast as well. The phone tries to capture pretty shots in almost any light condition. Outdoors, of course, the noise is negligible and the photos are sharp end to end. Wide angle shots do have lesser details. And of course, the fisheye effect is there that bulges the photo in the center. But yes, it brings something different and artistic to the table, unlike telephoto secondary cameras that just give you a blurred background. Of course, since the main sensor has a very wide aperture, the V30 is able to capture a natural bokeh from the main sensor itself, which evens it out to some extent. There's also a cine video mode on the phone that zooms in on a selective position in the frame. This comes in handy when your phone is hooked to a tripod and you need to zoom in on a particular area. There are some filters that add to the zing. Other modes include time lapse, slow motion, 360 panoramas and manual mode. It is surprising that on the front, LG still uses a 5 megapixel sensor like it did on the G6. The camera appears a step down from the V20's 8 megapixel front camera and of course the details are not that good. In good light, you get decent shots with accurate colors. And in low light, the photos are not blurred. So the shots come out decent, but it is not something you would expect from a phone this expensive. Overall, the V30 Plus is a well-made phone that is loaded with features, just like its high-end counterparts from Samsung and HTC. In fact, the V30 is one of those few phones made by LG that can fight competition, not just because of its great cameras, but because of its amazing price tag. Let us know what you think about the LG V30 Plus in the comment section below. Also, if you've liked this video, share it with your friends and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel to get notifications for the latest videos. Thank you for watching.